Hey guys, this is Jess from Stellar Tarot and welcome to another Witchcrafting Wednesday video. Today I am going to be making a fall foliage themed crown, um, but obviously you can substitute in flowers or other things like that uh, to make them represent different seasons. Um, so I've made a couple of flower crowns that I like to wear uh, in ritual previously. I have this one here that I tend to wear around like Ostara and Beltane. Um, and this is just a bunch of fake flowers that I purchased from a couple of different stores. I did like Michael's and um, I think there might even be a couple of branches from Walmart or the dollar store in here. Um, and uh, I began it with the base of a, uh, a fake pussy willow uh, branch that I then bent around in a circle and uh, locked it into place by uh, twisting and then gluing. So yeah, this is the one I typically use for belting. There's going to be some background noise today, guys, by the way, because I am at home and my husband is here and Emily is here. So uh, you might hear noises in the background and you might... Um, see Emily in the video at some point too. So this is the one that I wear uh, for like Letha Midsummer um, and as well as uh, Lunasa as well. So this one is mostly some sunflowers and some daisies and then um, these yellow flowers, I can't remember what they were supposed to be. Uh, and this is done on a base of the uh, ferns, which I picked up here. They are fake ferns. So I picked up two or three branches of them, twisted them around to make the crown, um, and then kind of twisted them on themselves and glued them into place. So the ferns make the base, uh, but the flowers kind of take over. And if you can see, I have stuck a little bird in here to a little goldfinch because I really wanted to represent the fact that there are so many seasonal birds um, in my area uh, at that point in time. The goldfinches have completely lost their yellow color right now, and I believe they migrate. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe they migrate, but for sure goldfinches are ones that you see a lot of when uh, you're in the summer. So for this uh, fall one, I decided to pick up <clears throat> from Michael's this uh, long stretch of wire, which already has all of these pine cones and seed pod like things on it. And um, the wonderful thing about Michael's in Canada and in the States is that if you get the things at the right time, they're often on sale. So instead of the $17 that this was supposed to be, I think I paid half that price, which is fantastic. So what I'm going to do is show you all my materials and what I need tool-wise, and then we're gonna get crafting. So I also picked up, um, they had branches, they were like, um, if you buy two, then you get them cheaper or something like that. So I picked up this little interesting um, wire one with these little pumpkins. I think they're intended to kind of be stuck in on wreaths, uh, but obviously I'm not doing that. So this one is really nice and easy to uh, bend and ply apart because it's wire. And then I also got this one. So this is a full stick. Again though, you can take this one apart. And this one has little uh, pumpkins and gourds on it as well. And there's a little bit of glitz on some of the leaves, but um, you know, you can always choose to take that kind of glitzy part off if you want. Um, I've got a pair of scissors here. You're going to need scissors for cutting things like tags off and uh, some branches you might be able to cut apart with scissors. I also have a pair of wire cutters slash pliers here as I smack it down on the table. And I've also got, just in case I need it, a little bit of this natural cording uh, that I can use to tie things into place. Um, I have in the past, I did make a, a flower wreath previously that I had, um, I bound it together with floral wire thinking that that would be great. 
Um, unfortunately, when you use floral wire, uh, no matter how hard you try to get all the ends and the bits and the wire off of you, you end up managing to stick yourself. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was not exactly successful. Alrighty, so how have they, oh, and I should say the other thing I have here is a glue gun, which is heating up right now. Here we go. So I've taken the labels and the, the tape that's binding them off. I'm just going to, as gently as possible, unwrap this. The unfortunate thing about this type of floral wreathing is that it comes, um, it, it really likes to tangle on itself quite well. I'm going to be cutting some of these extra bits off here just because um, they're just going to end up sticking me in the end and that's not a desired effect. But for now, let's just to unfurl this. So if you're making it for yourself, it's really quite an easy process. All you need to do is wrap it around your head and figure out how big it is. And then I like to take my wire cutters. This one's gonna be interesting because there's so many wires here. Oh, that might be easier than I thought. Yep, much easier than I thought. <laughs> And um, there is a loop here which you can use to hang this, but I'm not going to be using it for that. I am going to be wrapping these wires around themselves so that we can really cement that into place. So now we have our base, and I'm going to take these longer branches. So first I'm going to take these, these smaller ones and I'm going to cut them off. I'm going to trim them because I don't need that. So we've got all those ends trimmed. Now I'm going to take these little bits and bobs that um, are part of this and I'm just going to wrap them around the wreath because A, it gives a little bit more structure, but also it gets all these pieces laying in the same direction, which is, um, it, it gets them going directionally, which gives it uh, a little bit more of a look if you know what I mean like it gives it a little bit more um, of a filled out appearance and roughly as I go along keep making sure that it's in a wreath shape and pop it on just to be sure that it fits ah. <laughs> which it does and I think this is going to be my back. So I want to make sure that things like my little pine cones here end up lying in the right direction. So wherever I fear that things will just easily get caught, I'm just going to take a bit of hot glue and glue them into place. Because yeah, that definitely catches. <laughs> and I think it's also important where you have um, 
kind of placed your, like wrapped your um, extra wire bits around if that is what you needed to do. Um, glue one of the ends in place. It doesn't have to be a lot of hot glue, just enough to kind of keep it from going anywhere. crafting requires tea. And where I've wrapped my original ends around as well, I'm also going to put a little bit of glue to keep them from going anywhere. It's always a good idea in these cases to have a spare um, glue stick for your hot glue gun, just in case you run out mid-project and then you have to stick it in, you know, go leave the project, go and find it, stick it in, get it warmed again. That's a pain. All right, so we've got our base done. And all the pieces are where I want them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to flesh it out a little bit more with some of our pieces here. So I'm just going to start off by cutting a bunch of these off the base wire. Too many. Oh, that's still too many. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to look for some of the interesting branches to me, ones that I know I really want to use. Like for instance, <laughs> this one. I really like the berries on this one. The uh, glitter that's on the leaves, a lot of it can just be wiped off. A lot of the times it's just oversprayed when you get them like from the dollar store, places like that. So you can wipe some of the glitter off if you don't want that on there um, in total. And you can actually, for a lot of the cases, just slide some of the bits um, off the ends. In the case of these berries, I'm going to leave a little bit of an end and I'm going to glue them down into the base of my crown. So wherever I've got a wrap, I'm going to partially separate the two wires together and slip it down in between and then I'm going to adhere it with a dot of glue. And then I can take some of these leaves and I can also cut them apart because that part is just plastic. And again, I can slip these down in between the wires. And with a little bit of hot glue, they are secure. Um, in case the video doesn't show it, I am actually working um, on some newspaper here. I think it's always good to put a bit of, uh, either to work on a surface that you don't mind getting wrecked or to put down a bit of newspaper, especially when you're working with things like hot glue or um, really strong glues and things like that because you don't necessarily know um, where it's going to go. You can also take wire ones like these and kind of like slide some of the leaves up and then kind of wrap them around your uh, your bit and uh, keep them keep the, the wire uh, building on the process. Oops, my cutters. Um, but a lot of the time, 
I don't like to have the extra wires. I find that sometimes it can be really quite um, jarring and annoying. All right, so now this is just a matter of fleshing this out with um, as many bits and bobs as I want. So I am going to uh, start that nice little time-lapse uh, video process here, and um, I will come back with you in a minute and uh, share with you what I've got going on. finishing touches of that last little um, white little ball uh, and leaf type of uh, decoration on it. Now that one came on a main stem and was wrapped with like this brown paper and I've discovered in the past that if you uh, split this like paper tape apart you can then pull off individual strands which you can then apply to your crown a little bit more easily because they are um, a nice sturdy wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the placement that I want for these on the crown itself and I'm going to do a little bit of wire wrapping with this and then I'm going to glue the end of the wire down and then I'm going to glue a bit of that wire down to something else that I've had and then I can shape this end to be stick up and out a little bit and give it some uh, breadth. Also these little white pumpkins that it came with on there, um, they have their own wire so I'm going to apply them last 
there's only three of them. I'm probably not going to use all these strands, um, but I'm going to use some of them to give it a little bit more of a different color. And I just think they look really cute. So if where you want to put these wires to, if you don't have room to actually wrap them, you can always slip them in between the other wires that you have here and then glue it down into place if possible. There's just enough for me to wrap that and then secure with a dot of glue. And then I'm going to secure it here with a dot of glue where it rests on the crown itself. Nice thing about hot glue is you can blow on it to get it to um, cool down a little bit faster. <laughs> Dot of glue on my nail. <laughs> there we go. There we are. Next bit is going to go in here. Sometimes it feels you're a little bit like you're playing hide and seek with these things. Trying to figure out how you're going to get them to fit in. Not quite hide and seek. Maybe a little bit of, it's got, got a little bit of a Tetris vibe sometimes. So trying to secure them in all these other more obscure places of your wreath. Now, the thing that's difficult with foliage wreaths, uh, wreaths that you don't necessarily have with flower wreaths is uh, coverage. So if you ever, if you're making a flower wreath for yourself and you don't like the way that the band is kind of exposed a little bit, when in doubt, just stick another flower on it. Like that's the nice thing is they're, they're meant to be kind of ostentatious and, and you know, beautiful and, and things like that. So. Um, it can be harder with these uh, foliage ones because the leaves might be bigger, so you might end up having to um, find yourself another, uh, you might end up having to find um, another uh, strand of branches where you're able to get like smaller leaves to glue over top of things so that you can cover up some of your rougher ends. And if that ends up being the case, don't worry, that's totally fine. The nice thing about like dollar stores and, and pound shops and stuff is that they're usually just rife with these types of things this time of year. It's almost always possible to find um, something that can cover up some of your rougher spots. And then I kind of remove my glue gun strings as I go. And we're going to do one more of these little guys. And then we're going to find a place for the pumpkins. This one I really need to make sure that I bend it around properly because it's got a sharp ended wire on the end. So I'm going to use my pliers to kind of help me with that a little bit. There we go. That's wrapped nicely. And I'm going to literally glue a cap onto the end of it so that it can't stick me in the head. <laughs> Also going to place a little dot of glue right there where it touches again on the band. All right, so that is the bulk of the wreath done. You have these nice little bits that stick up, which I quite like. Of course, you can keep it more tight to the head if you want. Like a lot of the projects that I suggest to you guys, these are highly, 
highly customizable. And um, I intend to use this wreath for uh, Mabon and Samhain. So now I've got our little pumpkins. So now I have to make the executive decision. Do I want to wrap them around or do I want to tri trim them and have them stick onto the band? Do you know what? I think I want to wrap them. And I think what I'm going to do um, there we go. Let's find a couple of areas that are a bit thinner than I thought that they were. Place. You can actually wrap them. There we go. Little glad dab of glue. That one's in place. Last one I'm going to place over on this side here. This one is a little bit harder to feed that wiring where I want. There we go. Now I'm gonna to have to make sure that I really glue this one down into place in a couple of places, because otherwise it's gonna be everywhere. There we go. There's the wreath. All right. Well, let's let this cool down and then we'll try it on. All right, guys, so this is it on. What do you guys think of my little uh, foliage flower crown? I hope that you guys found this video kind of um, inspiring and helpful and uh, if you decide to make your own crown for um, vanity or for ritual purposes I would love to see some pictures of them tag me on Instagram my handle is down below it is stellar rain dancer as always and um, I hope that you guys have a very blessed Samhain ritual I have one more Samhain uh, craft uh, 
theme for you for next week. And then uh, because Samhain falls on the Wednesday itself, I thought that maybe what we would do on uh, Witchcrafting Wednesday on Samhain itself is um, just share a little bit of my day and do it like kind of vlog style. So it's going to go up later in the day than my Witchcrafting Wednesday videos usually do. So thank you so much for joining me here today, guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye!